Hey everybody, this is uh, Abnormal Psychology, and today we're going to talk about hoarding disorder. A little bit of the history. Um, I think virtually all clinicians recognize that there was some aspect of the lives of some of their patients that when they learned they were collecting and keeping, i.e. hoarding things, that it began to make their lives more and more difficult. It has been more recently that we've had enough research to cull it out as a separate disorder from obsessive compulsive disorder, but related to obsessive compulsive disorder. In fact, a fair percentage of people with hoarding disorder also have obsessive compulsive disorder, but not all. Uh, there's even a TV show uh, about uh, hoarders. In fact, that's the name of it, isn't it? So, what are the what are the signs and symptoms of this according to the DSM-5? Well, they have a lot of trouble discarding and parting with possessions, regardless of their value. So, a bottle cap can be as important as a great work of art. In terms of its uh, v value as a kept item, okay? Uh, it, it They really perceive that they need to save things uh, and that getting rid of something is extraordinarily distressful to them. In fact, one way to look at this disorder is to is to demonstrate it by saying this. The things that they have become as attached to them as human relationships do. Very difficult to understand, but it's true. Now, they usually have enough stuff when it gets to be something that's been going on for a while, months anyway, that clutters what they have, making movement through their homes difficult, making escape under emergency situations more difficult, presenting a, a flammability issue, because many of them keep papers and so forth and magazines and flammable items. And, and the cluttering makes the intended use of the rooms that this clutter is in unusable for those purposes uh, that they were intended. So this causes impairment in functioning or distress and or distress, but you'd be surprised at the number of hoarders who don't otherwise divulge that their that their home is uh, cluttered in that grotesque manner. Uh, they go to work, they may have a, a, a job and they function fine, uh, but not so at their home, you see. So we're not talking about just things that pile up. We're not just talking about things that need to be cleaned. We're talking about deep, from even floor to ceiling, things that others or most of us would discard. Old papers, dirty clothes that can't be washed because the wash area is also full of stuff. The sink full of dishes and boxes and things. Uh, the The refrigerator may have never been opened in not been opened in months. Uh, the bathroom may be unusable. Uh, so, we're, if they have animals and they frequently do, there's poop and pee everywhere. There's rats. There's insects. So, in some cases, we're talking about a really terrible situation. And if somebody is renting or they have uh, some way in which the, they receive funding from government sources, that if those sources, uh, landlords or others, determine that they have someone in this condition, they will demand that the place be cleaned up or evict them because of the fire risks and so on. Okay, um, so they actually fear throwing away something that may become important later or that might be meaningful to them that they don't quite remember or 
it has some intrinsic value that we don't see. How does an old bottle cap that's torn off a bottle, how is that important? So there, this something has happened in their ability to perceive value versus no value. So you've had the experience of thinking, I don't want to throw this out, I might need it later, like a, like a box of screws when you did a, a job and you don't have it and don't, ha don't have a need for them anymore, but you don't want to throw them away because you might need them. This is really well beyond that. Now, the stuff that they keep, the stuff they find at junk spots or at the street or at resale shops or whatever it might be, or online, it, re it reduces their anxiety to collect it, to have it, to keep it. They actually feel safer surrounded by their things. You'll often see that their bedroom, uh, the bedroom is, a, is, a, is in some ways a sacred spot for most people, yes? And you will find that they have one area of their bedroom that is carved out for sleeping on the floor, a mattress on the floor, something like that. But everywhere around it is full of stuff. Okay. Um, so, so this is a very bizarre um, disorder. It's very bizarre and it's troubling because what happens is, is the, is the family actually uh, becomes less important to them, less a source of healthy attachment than does the possessions. And so the family doesn't understand this. They think if they get that person out of the house and they bring in a crew and clean, they'll have, that won't work. They will have it back to the way it was within a very short period of time. So the family gets frustrated. They feel, uh, they feel marginalized and discarded themselves. Interesting use of the word, I suppose. Estimations are somewhere for prevalence at 2 to 6%. I'm, it may be higher. I don't know. There's a gradation and continuum between someone who fits the uh, criteria for uh, hoarding versus someone who collects versus someone who is just messy. Uh, so <laughs> males and females are equally represented, but some studies seem to suggest that males are more common uh, in the clinical setting, in the clinical samples. Uh, we see more females, probably because they ask for help more frequently. And it is more common in older adults. And it may be precipitated by stressful events like a divorce or the death of a child uh, or, or something. Okay? What are the risks? Well, interestingly, um, this is the only disorder I know of that has a temperamental risk of indecisiveness. So you will see this across the lifespan in many, many cases. Uh, in terms of genetic connections, we see that uh, this disorder is common, more common in uh, first order relatives uh, and, 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 and as much as 50% of individuals who hoard have a relative with a disorder. So that's a pretty significant uh, uh, percentage. Comorbidity. What else does this show up with? Well, anxiety disorder or depression. Many of them have social anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and some who don't work will maybe qualify for agoraphobia. About one in five have OCD as well separate from the hoarding. Okay, so that's hoarding disorder. Think about that one, will you? Watch some videos online of hoarders.